First thing about all this is I forgot my handkerchief. Uh, and uh, Cheryl might have to get some Kleenex out here in a minute. Uh, and uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of people in here that um, that are friends and I care about, and uh, they weren't even really invited. Uh, so if y'all would just turn around so I don't see your faces, this will help me a whole lot get through the rest of this. I, I really, I intended this entirely to be about um, just a question and answer because I'm just not capable of saying thanks like I need to uh, at this moment. So uh, this this university and its growth and its excellence is what made what made this all possible. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just the lucky one to get to work here for 33 years. So I would a lot rather answer questions than try to go any further than that. Did you think about this a lot during the season, or did you sort of put it away and, and dwell on it since the end of the season? Then? You know, I, I've, I've thought about this for a few years. Uh, like Scott says, it, it, it's a grind. Uh, I, I didn't want this program to ever go backwards if I could help it, and, uh, and it just seemed like it was, you know, everybody, everybody has to work hard to do well in their job, but uh, Doggone it if they hadn't come up with all these ways to watch video like crazy. And uh, so uh, all of us on our staff were just sitting there watching video for hours and hours. And if we got everything done right, and uh, I just, it's, it's just time. It's just time. I'm, I am ready to not try to win the next game. This is sort of the best way to, to put it. Uh, and, uh, and, and Belmont deserves somebody who is ready to do that all the time. And there's going to be a lot of good things that come out of this. I'm, I'm a dinosaur coach. I, I just, uh, you know, Brian Harris is back there, and he and Casey were here over the long haul, and uh, they kind of pushed, pulled, prodded me out of uh, the NAI mentality to the Division I mentality, and uh, that meant I didn't get to play nearly as much golf. Uh, in the summertime as I used to be able to. And so now Vince is better than me when he wasn't even close when we first met each other. Uh, and uh, I've got some catching up to do. Rick, how much did the, uh, getting the NCAA tournament win play into this at all, if at all? Pro probably not at all. And I, you know, I guess my default position on this year was that, that it was probably going to be my last year, but I, I think it was foolish to say for sure that it was uh, because you do need to get away from it when it's all over and not make the decision. Most years I would have retired at the end of them for about the last 15, I think. Uh, this year I might, have, I might have really chosen to stay because of this team that played so well at the end of the year and so much was accomplished, but uh, in either case you just back off of it a little bit and. Uh, um, and, and get the big picture. And uh, I, I'm ready. It's the right thing. Uh, I think it's the right thing for the school, actually. Uh, how good, I guess, do you feel about the fact that you're leaving plenty for the next coach? To well, I, I feel like that was my job. I feel like that's what I was supposed to do. Um, and, and I, you know, if this had been – and, uh, you know, these guys, our staff is standing back there, and they'll tell you, we didn't know what we had this year. We knew we had two good seniors, and, and other than that, we were really, really young. I, I told the team this morning, I, I wasn't sure we'd win 20 games, and that sounds, we won 27, and, and it, so it sounds like that's silly, uh, but, but completely felt that way. So I feel so much better. It, it's, it's kind of a perfect storm for me personally that, that – uh, uh, that we make the tournament as an at-large, and, we, and we, we have this in this room, we have that moment, and two days later we get the first NCAA tournament win. And then it was a loss, but we played a, a, a Big Ten team dead even, a good Big Ten team uh, dead even for 40 minutes. And uh, although we'd like to have played the next day, there was no shame in that loss. What was the most difficult part of this decision? Players just leaving players uh, and, you know, probably leaving a team. That's two different things, kind of just the, the, all of us 
um, are so lucky to get to coach the kids that we get to coach. Uh, but I've been on the team for 41 plus years as, as a coach, not to mention any inferior playing ability that I had, and I was on teams before that. And uh, so, um, you know, I, that's not going to be the case anymore, and that's, that's a pretty significant part of, of my life, big time. I don't think they were a real surprise. You, you guys have been asking too many questions. Joe, you started the whole thing, so why are you asking that question? Uh, and, um, uh, and I'm just a little too uh, naive and uh, lean toward uh, not misleading people that uh, uh, I probably just gave you all kinds of rope to keep asking the question. Uh, Steve Lehman tried to get it out of me last night. Uh, so. Uh, it, it's. Uh, I, I don't think they were surprised because they'd even been asked the question and, and they'd heard. But they, I don't think they knew. I, I, I think we did okay getting to that point this morning where they didn't know. And that was the most important part of all this to me. How much, if at all, will you be involved in, in choosing the next coach? You know, that's. Uh, I, I'm defaulting. I'm, I'm giving that responsibility up if, if, if Dr. Fisher... Uh, and Scott want to discuss that, then I'm happy to, but I've got no right to that. Uh, I mean, this program obviously means a lot to me, but I'm the one that's walking away, and uh, uh, it, it's in good hands with, with those two. Back to the players, uh, Nick told me in Jacksonville that he would try to talk you out of it. Uh, was Nick Nuzinski? Yeah. After all the times I yelled at him this year, he said that. <laughs> I need to go give him a hug. How uh, did they take it? I mean, yeah, was yeah. there any of that? I mean, no, no. Sadly to say, there was no one <laughs> trying to talk me out of it. Come to think of it, it's just been a whole lot of congratulations and, uh, and, good, and good riddance along the way. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Fisher gave me the opportunity uh, to stay. Uh, sure. <laughs> he, he was, we were going to have to negotiate, but he was maybe going to give me one more year. <laughs> if I don't tell jokes, I'm not going to last very long. Up here. They're not very good, by the way, but I'm trying. Okay. It's not something you've obviously done your whole life. When, when did you quit? No. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I just, I, I, I think I'm different and fortunate for me that it's just not all there is to me. I mean, it, it, it was super important to succeed, win games, and hopefully do what's right for Belmont. Uh, but uh, if I'd been playing at a high profile program and, and played as much golf as I've played, um, uh, you know, I couldn't have, I, I couldn't have done it. I've got other things. I've got to learn how to beat Cheryl in tennis. I've got to get better at that. And, and uh, um, so, you know, it's, I just, I just want healthy years of being able to travel and, uh, and, and play those games. I still carry my bag. Uh, I can still get around Jim Seabury thinks he could beat me in tennis and uh, I'm sure he could actually, but I'm going to talk a good game till he does, and uh, so anyway, um, that the, I'm going to be okay. I guess is what I'm saying. I think I think without what I've done my whole life, and I think there's just a lot of people. That's that's who they are, and that's almost all they are. A lot of those lines, and I give Dick Horton credit for this because he brought it up to me long ago. Any interest in NCAA selection committee serving in a, doing anything with the NCAA going forward? Well, I think anybody that's ever been in this game would, would uh, volunteer to be on the selection committee for the tournament. It, as far as I know, they, uh, they only have current representatives of NCAA schools or, or conferences. Commissioner DeBush could, could tell that. And I don't, think, I don't think they've ever had even a former coach unless maybe a long time ago they were and became an athletic director. Lee Fowler comes to mind a guy who coached at one time, but he was athletic director. So I don't, I don't think it's made up that way. Uh, you were an athletic director too, though. So. I was an athletic director yeah, 30, <laughs> 30 years ago, a pretty bad one too, by the way. You 
you talked about the transition from NAIA. Was there ever a point in there where you thought, I'm not the guy to do this? Yeah, when Dr. Fisher got here and saw a, a couple of really bad games that we played, I, I was pretty sure that they, I was in a lot of trouble. Uh, because he, he was not here with the history of the NAI and the success we had and seen, and, and he comes in and we're pretty bad. We're pretty bad when he gets here. And, uh, you know, uh, I, didn't, I didn't second guess that. Now, it, it would be easy to, just like he said, I think there were a whole lot of people who thought Belmont was making a, a big mistake. And had we not, starting in 2006, made these NCAA tournaments, and, and you, saw the, you saw the amount of attention we got nationally uh, throughout the whole week about are we gonna be the at-large pick or not, and then we get a tournament win and sort of justify that. And, and uh, uh, I mean, I think this year was worth it, Dr. Fisher. Uh, this year alone was worth the decision that, that Dr. Trout made. Uh, and, you know, first of all, it's not, it's, not, it's not really for me to decide that kind of thing. I guess, and, and pride's not supposed to be a good thing, so uh, I'll try to answer that as best I can. I think, um, I, I think uh, succeeding uh, in the wins and losses and championships and that sort of thing without, you know, with just without giving in to doing all the kinds of things that so many people in so many different kind of businesses choose to do to shortcut their way to success. Um, I think it can be done. I think it can be done in anything that this world has to offer, any job that anybody has. And uh, uh, so, uh, I mean, there, there was just something we weren't gonna do and that is we weren't, we weren't gonna break the rules. We weren't gonna be unfair to the kids in our program. I've never run anybody off. Um, uh, if I made mistakes on, on what kind of player they were when we recruited them, then I suffered through those mistakes for four years if they wanted to stick around, and, uh, and they did. And so uh, I guess this the combination of that, the, obviously the uh, significant off the floor slash academic success of our program that goes along with the championships is, is uh, pretty unique in Division One basketball. I would say Davidson's uh, in, in the running there when it comes to that, but uh, uh, that th those things all together and still being able to win, it's just, there's just a lot of people that think you can't do that in this business and in others. What's the key to doing that? Well, I think choices of people um, that, that you uh, have around you, you need, you need people that are uh, good uh, at what they do, that understand that, that you're not taking shortcuts. Um, and, and, and as a leader, I think Brian Ayers is back there. He, he one time he had a, a coach ask him, what can you, what do you do best for Coach Bird? And he says, uh, he says, find the, find the kind of players that, that Coach Bird will have in the program and that want, want to coach. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really ever thought of that. That was Brian's, uh, we almost don't ever have any meetings, so I don't know how Brian would have known that. He just had to figure that out himself. But um, uh, that's, he, he knew how important that the people who played on our team were and that they needed to be real students, that they needed to be um, very competitive and tough and unselfish and team first and coachable uh, or I didn't, I didn't want him telling me about them because I didn't want to go watch them and find out they weren't that way. And that's what all those guys have done. Not as hard as I thought it was going to be if we don't have any more questions. Vince, you got any questions back there? <laughs> Thanks for being here. You guys appreciate it a lot. Uh, I, and you know, um, uh, you folks and I'm not sure any, any of you folks would have been here 33 years ago, but the, the media, Mike, I guess, the media uh, has been great to us, and, uh, um, and you know, it, it was easy for me to come at it from a different perspective because my dad was a sports writer, and I, and I know both sides of it, but I appreciate the treatment we've received, the fair treatment we've received, 
um, and hope that you felt like it went both ways. So thank you all very much for everything. Okay.